shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And we'll unpack that here this morning and see just exactly what that means for you and for his love for the world. So all of our hymns this morning will zero in on this fact that Jesus is our shepherd. And so our opening hymn will be 709, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
first reading then for this fourth Sunday of Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, and here we'll see what are the early Christians doing now, just like us in the days after Easter for them, it was for the first Easter, and what are they doing? Well, they're gathering on Sunday morning just like we're gathering on Sunday morning, and what are they doing? Coming to hear the Apostles' teaching, the reading of scriptures, preaching the sermon. They're coming together to gather around the fellowship what of the altar, the Lord's Supper, the breaking of the bread, and then prayers, what we do on Sunday morning, service of prayer, preaching, what we're doing here today. And then it flows out of the worship service into their everyday lives as they take that love and mercy and care and concern and forgiveness of Christ to those around us. And it fits so well with what we heard today in our Bible studies, Lutheran Church Charities. We're here with our canine comfort dog ministry, and that is to take that comfort, that encouragement, that care, that love that Jesus has to those around. And we'll hear at the end of our reading here today, we don't deal with numbers, it's the Lord adds to their number daily, those who are being saved. All we can do is plant, all we can do is water, and God is the one who gives us the growth. So we hear then these words from St. Luke, from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
epistle reading is taken from 1 Peter, the second chapter, and this fits in so well with our sermon here today, but more importantly, it fits in so well with our Bible studies here over the past couple of weeks, and will fit in especially next Sunday as we've been walking through this whole wokeism thing and seeing its origin in Marxism, and especially now the, the new Marxism called Neo-Marxism, which is cultural Marxism, and as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, it puts people in two different categories. The oppressed and the oppressor. And that's it. As we saw last week, Mark said, the thing that's destroying society is Christianity and its theology of suffering. Because we endure suffering. We see that God is working through suffering and it produces perseverance, character, hope. And Mark's whole thing is we can't have any suffering now. It can't be endured. It has to be ended and if you're suffering, you're a victim. And there's got to be some reason outside of you of why you're suffering. And that has to be eliminated. And more importantly, as we'll talk about in the sermon, it's Christ and the church that causes most of the suffering. And that has to be eliminated. But as we're going to see, that's a totally different religion because Peter is going to say, wait a minute, you're to endure suffering. And that actually you've been called to suffer. Because he's the one who calls us to suffer, but Christ. <clears throat> Peter remembers those words from Jesus. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow me. And crosses hurt. They involve suffering. And so there, there's two different li- religions here at work and at play. And that's what we're talking about here Sunday after Sunday in our Bible study. But let's, let's hear these very important words hear from Peter because he's going to remind us that this is all connected to Jesus who suffered for us and he leaves us with his example. So we hear then these words from Peter. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good, and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. I invite the congregation then to stand in honor of the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel then according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. 
Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory and love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. At this time, then, we're going to recite the Ten Commandments. We're going to confess the Apostles' Creed, and we'll pray, then, the Lord's Prayer, which is the first three chief parts of Martin Luther's small catechism. And once again, it dovetails so well with what we've been talking about in Bible study. The world talks about, this is what love looks like. Well... God's going to tell us this is what love is. That's what the commandments are all about. This is what love looks like on a daily basis. Loving God, this is what it means to love your neighbor. When we don't do this, when we uh, don't do the things that we should do, and when we do the things that we shouldn't do, we sin. And then who's going to rescue us? Well, that's what the Apostles' Creed is all about. It's going to tell about the work that God has done for us, especially in Christ. Especially today on Good Shepherd Sunday, the Good Shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. And that allows us then to call God Father. And so then we'll pray together then the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. So we begin then by reciting the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his man servant, or lady servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May be seated then as we sing the hymn of the day, hymn 740, I am Jesus, will it play?
Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Door, 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 door. It almost sounds like this morning that it should be Door Sunday. Not Good Shepherd Sunday, but I know Door Sunday isn't as catchy as Good Shepherd Sunday. But if you were listening to what Jesus said in our Gospel reading here this morning from John chapter 10, you might actually think that today is Door Sunday because four times in only ten little verses, Jesus uses the word door. So what does Jesus say about doors? He says, well, the guy that doesn't use the door, but gets into the sheep pen by another way, he said, that guy is a thief. He's a robber. And the thief, he, he kind of sneaks over, he, he slithers in under the fence, because he can't use the door. Why? Because he's not a shepherd. Only the shepherd can use the door because the shepherd actually cares for the sheep. He actually loves the sheep that are inside. Well, the people who are listening to this, especially the Pharisees, Jesus is actually telling this little story here against the Pharisees. He's saying these guys are supposed to be the pastors. That's what the word means, the shepherd. They're supposed to be the shepherds. They're supposed to be the pastors, but they're not doing anything but slaughtering the sheep. They're not getting it. At least they don't want to get it. So Jesus says, I can read your faces. You don't understand it. You don't know what's going on here. So I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to double down on this thing. That's why then in the second half of our reading, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And then he says it again. I am the door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He'll go in and out, and find pasture. Jesus says, I am the door. What the heck does that mean? Well, just kind of like we have an entrance way here into the, into the Holy of Holies, into the chancel here, up into the altar to receive the body and blood of Christ, the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. There, there's only one entryway. And Jesus says, I'm the only way to get through because in the ancient world the shepherd would actually sleep there in front of the entryway and if anybody was going to get into at night where they bring the sheep in get into harm those sheep they were going to have to go through the shepherd and he says I am the door only through my holy life and only through my bloody sacrifice on the cross are you getting in it's the only way to find the green pastures of heaven through him and him alone. He is the door. Outside that door, outside the safety of the sheep pen, especially at night, Jesus says, outside of the thieves and the robbers. And it doesn't matter what they look like, how they talk, the flowery words that they use, it doesn't make a difference whether they're actually wearing a clerical collar or a gold robe, or a business suit, or a golf shirt, or a Budweiser t-shirt. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference if their hair is all you know, neat and moose, or if it's all messed up. It doesn't make a difference whether they're clean shaven, or whether they have a beard down to their belt. It doesn't make a difference if they use PowerPoint to make powerful points, or just if they got their own powerful points. It doesn't make a difference if they talk about Love, diversity, inclusion. Jesus says, if what they are saying is not connected to the narrow door of my death and my resurrection, they're thieves and robbers. They can't save you. And they're only coming for one thing, to kill, steal, destroy. It doesn't make a difference if they heal you. It doesn't make a difference if they make your bank book burst. It doesn't make a difference if they get you to dump drugs. It doesn't make a difference if they even give you a positive personality. If they don't preach Christ and Him crucified, Jesus says they're thieves. They're not shepherds. 
why, if you think about it, every religion out there today is pretty much the same. Even the new religion of America today, which is wokeism. And last week in Bible study, we walked our way through it. They've got a different view of God. They've got a different view of man. They've got a different view of sin. They've got a different view of suffering. They've got a different view of salvation. But really, in a roundabout way, it's the same view as every other religion out there. The religion of the TV preacher Joel Osteen, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Islam, Judaism, it's all the same. Sad thing is, for even most Christian churches today, same message, because they don't have one of these. There's no cross. It's a Christless and it's a crossless Christianity. There's no what? Good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. It's just be nice. Hate less. Love more. Try hard. That's the message. And the devil and all of the world's false teachers out there would tempt us to believe that salvation and life and success all up to us. Do this, don't do this. Change that, don't change that. Hate less, love more. And in the end, you'll probably make it. But think about it here for a moment. In not doing this and not doing that, and in doing this and not doing that, who's the door? Bingo. You're the door. You make yourself the door. You're actually the one who decides whether you're in or not. God doesn't put you in the sheep pen. You put yourself in the pen. And it sounds kind of funny when you think about it that way. It sounds weird, which is why if you actually sit down and analyze it, sheep never put themselves in the pen. When you analyze it and think about it, you, you'd never believe it. You wouldn't even listen to it, and that's exactly what Jesus says today. The sheep don't listen to a higher to a thief, to a robber. They only listen to the good shepherd. You'll never follow any other voice than the voice of your shepherd. Why? Because Jesus says, you're my sheep. Now, the Lord uses that word today, not four times, but six times. Sheep, 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 and sheep. So maybe instead of door Sunday today, maybe we should actually call it Sheep Sunday. But here's the deal once again. You don't put yourself in the pen. This isn't about you. Because you're not just anyone's sheep. You're his sheep. Why? Because you hear and listen to his voice. That's why if you're doing that, each one of you here today is a sheep. A sheep of the good shepherd. You are uniquely loved and cared for by the good shepherd. He calls you by name because that's what good shepherds do. They name their sheep. Special names for each one of the sheep. Now to me, I'd never do that. Because to me, sheep all look the same. In my mind, they're all kind of whitish, they're fuzzy, and they all go ba ba. But to the Lord, each one of you is unique because He created you. He's redeemed you. He's called you by name. Where did He give you that name? Oh, right there at the baptismal font. In the water and word of holy baptism, what did God do? He tagged His sheep by name. And the Lord Jesus, He's the door for the sheep. He's the way into the sheep pen. And He's not just any old door. He's not just any old life. He's your eternal life. And you, as we sang here a few moments ago, you are Jesus' little lamb. And He's your shepherd. 
A shepherd who actually lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus says the hired hands, they're anything but good and noble. When the wolves come, when the thieves show up, the hired hand sits there and says, well, man, i got a choice to make. And that's where a lot of basically even pastors are at today. They're nothing more than they see themselves in hired hands. I've got a choice today. I got a choice to make. So we've talked about a Bible study two weeks ago. So we're studying this whole wokeism thing, and the subtitle of the study is it's a call to courage, confession, and love. And the courage thing, it's kind of lacking a little bit in society today, and especially when it comes to even Christian pastors. I got a choice to make. Is it my life? Is it my well-being? My popularity? Or am I actually going to die for these? Stupid sheep. Oh, my vote's with myself. And I'm out of here. And Jesus says the hired hands, they bolted. And the sheep, they were slaughtered. For he says the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief comes to actually, he's not coming to give you life. He's coming to draw you away from the safety of the shepherd. To get you to focus in on you, which is what Satan always does. To get you to look inside yourself and to think that you've got to lock your spot down in the green pasture by something that starts and ends with what you're doing, what you're saying, or what you're feeling. Which is wokeism once again to a T. But the only thing that you find behind that door, Jesus says today, is death. But your good shepherd, he comes to bring life. He took upon himself all the times that you've decided to live for yourself and not others. He died for all the times that you tried to make yourself the door. But that's not the end of the story because we heard on Easter Sunday he rose again on the third day. And you have life in his name. Life that goes on and on and on because his life goes on and on and on and on. You are his sheep. And he goes before you to lead you, to guide you, to protect you, to care for you. Because he goes out in front of you to meet your enemies head on and to defeat them. And you follow him because you see that. And you know his voice. So don't listen to all the other voices that are out there. That tell you that you can make things better by what you're saying, by what you're doing, by what you're feeling. There's no other way than through the death and resurrection of the Good Shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. And remember, you are his sheep. And he isn't just any old shepherd. He's the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd that lays down his life for you. And my friends, by the time here in eight weeks or so when we finish this study of wokeism, we'll see that is the answer to it. The good shepherd that lays down his life. Because remember, in wokeism, going back to Marx, there's only two groups of people, the oppressor and the oppressed. And as we have been learning, who's the greatest oppressor? Him. He won't let you be your authentic self. He won't let you do what you want to do. you got to get rid of Him so that you can be what you want to be. But take a look at Him up there. He's your oppressor? It's almost a laughable thing. If you were here on Good Friday, what, what did you hear? The Old Testament prophecy started right out of the gate, the Good Friday Tenebrae service. For what did the prophet Isaiah say? He was oppressed. How can he be your oppressor when you're the one that killed him? And the prophet Isaiah said, as Peter said today, he suffered for you, and he didn't revolt. He didn't rebel. He didn't even open his mouth. 
The good shepherd is also a lamb. The lamb of God who was led to the slaughter. He laid down his life so that through this sacrifice, once and for all, you might be made acceptable to God. Is today Door Sunday? Sheep Sunday? Ah, better than all that, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. Today is the day we celebrate the fact that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. The door through which we have life. Not death. We have life. And we have it abundantly. Forgiven. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds and faith in Christ Jesus into life everlasting. Amen. This time then I invite Rhonda Wesselman, our new parish nurse, to come forward as she is installed into office. Rhonda, dear sister in Christ, you are to serve our Lord as parish nurse here at Calvary Lutheran Church. So hear what Holy Scripture has to say about those who serve in the church. St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, Let each one test his own work, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who who are of the household of faith. And then in Colossians chapter 3, St. Paul once again says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called to one body, and be thankful. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So now then, in the presence of God and of this congregation, I install you as parish nurse then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time then, I invite the congregation to please stand for prayer as we pray for God's blessings upon our ministries here at Calvary. O oh Lord God, we pray that you would be with Rhonda, that you would visit her with your love and favor, that you would enlighten her mind with the light of her gospel, place in her heart a love of service, nourish her with the goodness that you can only give, and of your great mercy, that you would keep her in your love, that she would be faithful in her service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go then in the name of the Lord, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So that may the Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep you. Amen. You go ahead and return to your seat. I invite the congregation to remain standing as the offering is brought forward. And as we sing the offertory found printed there in your bulletin, we'll sing, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.
to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and pardon with all our heart and with all our might, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, Especially this day, we remember Charlie, Shirley, Jeff, Donnie, the family of Christy Williams, Nina, Jack, Ken, Marlis, Stephanie, Bev, Donna, Tim, Christine, Roger, Lucy, Mel, Ron, and Harry. We pray for them and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death, the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for our announcement. Welcome everyone this morning here once again in the name of the Lord we can celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday and the fact that we actually have a shepherd that actually gives up his life, lays down his life for sheep. And if you know anything about sheep, they're dumb and stupid prayers. And that's a, that's a pretty good definition of who we are because it's a biblical definition. Go back to Isaiah again. He says we all like sheep have wandered. We've gone astray. Each of us is turned to his own way. We're all rebellious teenagers. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. But the Lord came to lay down his life for us. Not to oppress us, but to save us. And we give thanks to God for that. Not just today on Good Shepherd Sunday, but each and every day. A couple quick announcements here today. First of all, in just a moment after closing final hymn here, Confirmation kids will head to the ABC room uh, for their final class here, their final official class. This will be our review session for the final exam. So it will go all the way to 1.30. So parents, grandparents, pick up a confirmation student at 1.30. Next week, next Sunday, final exam. And that also will go to 1.30 as well. So next two Sundays, pick up your student, child, grandchild at 1.30. Then this week, Prep for Trash and Treasure. We're accepting donations all the way up to Wednesday. And ladies and men will be in there working 9 to 4, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Final day to drop stuff off. Thir Thursday, they'll be getting everything set up. And then the Women's Guild will have their meeting Wednesday, or Thursday night. Thursday night at 7 to kind of do the final uh, prep work and getting everything ready to go because Black Friday hits. Friday morning, 8 o'clock. If you've ever been here, it is. They're lined up all the way from the door there, all the way over here to Clinger Street. So, uh, Friday morning, trash and treasure sale hits. 
8, 4.30, and then Saturday, 8 to 11.30. We'll especially need some guys if you've got some time to come and help the ladies here on Saturday from 11.30 to 1.30. We're cleaning out what's left over, moving tables, chairs around, and all that sort of stuff. So a uh, busy week here with Trash and Treasure, and then a couple of items outside of that here. Uh, Wednesday night, Board of Trustees meet at 6. Trustees and elders will meet at 6.30 jointly, and then the elders will have the meeting by themselves following the trustees meeting as we look at security issues here for both the church building and for preschool. So that will be uh, Wednesday and then Thursday morning. Our study of Nehemiah continues at 9 o'clock. We invite you to be here for that. Then also, we kind of once again officially welcome uh, Rhonda as our parish nurse and also the new Cal Calvary Health Ministry. There's a little survey here in your bulletin. Uh, if you'd like to participate in doing some walking in the gym or outside if we do that somewhere, or chair exercises, uh, you can check that there or, or talk to uh, Rhonda as well. And always remember that on the third Sunday of every month, she'll be doing those blood pressure checks in between services and uh, Bible studies. So that'll be that continual ministry here. And then we'll keep branching out here as well. Then finally, before we go, we'd like to welcome once again uh, Lutheran Church Charities. We had uh, Caleb here, the canine comfort dog, and the handlers, the members over at Emmanuel in uh, Valparaiso. And uh, they'll be back in the uh, narthex again if you'd like to talk to them and uh, uh, meet Caleb and so forth. He's a world-renowned traveler. Uh, he, he gets around. He's been down at Uvalde after the school shooting there back down in Louisville here a few weeks ago when we had the bank shooting and just gets around Indiana and Chicago and all over doing various things. But uh, we give thanks to God for that incredible ministry that opens up a lot of doors because people know the Comfort Dog Ministry and then they've got to get connected with Lutheran Church Charities and it's an opportunity where we can bring that mercy and love of Christ to people during times of tragedies and needs and storms and everything else. So if you'd like to donate to that, the box is out there as well, and today specifically that will go to help Caleb and uh, the, that ministry of that particular team that we're sponsoring. So we give thanks to God here for that work and we welcome them. So have a good week here in the name of the Lord. We look forward to seeing a lot of you here in the building throughout the week as we get ready for Trash and Treasure. And we'll conclude our worship then today with our closing hymn. We'll sing hymn 710, The Lord's My Shepherd. I'll not want.